The advent of gene editing technologies, notably CRISPR-Cas9, and new artificial intelligence models have ushered in a new era of scientific exploration and ethical debates. Now, one of the most intriguing questions that comes from this sci-fi unification is whether or not gene editing can actually be used to enhance human intelligence. This question not only piques scientific curiosity, but it raises a whole lot of ethical questions. Is intelligence something that's even editable in our genes, or is it something that we learn growing up? If it is editable in our genetics, then what are the steps that would have to be completed before we could actually become more intelligent as adults? If we understand what those steps are, do they look like something that might be solved in our lifetimes? And these are the types of questions that I'm going to be trying to answer for you in this video. All right, let's start with the age old nurture versus nature debate. What is intelligence? Is it nature or is it nurture? And if it is influenced by both to some degree, we have to ask, is it influenced more by genetics or by education? And it turns out the facts are, the science is in, there is actually a very strong genetic component to intelligence. And I wouldn't say that lightly because clearly the environment that you grew up in, the kind of education you have access to, has a profound impact on how intelligent somebody becomes in the long run. But the reason why we know genetics do play a very important role in intelligence is because there are studies that have been done on genetically identical twins. And by taking two children with the exact same genetics and following their IQ, their intelligence throughout their life, scientists have determined that genetics can account for approximately 50 to 80% of the variance in intelligence among individuals. Now, the interesting thing about that range, going from 50 to 80%, is it turns out that the genetic influence on how intelligent someone is actually varies by age. Interestingly, genetics play more of a role in older populations than it does in younger populations. That's right, genetic influence actually increases with age. Now, of course, there isn't a single gene for intelligence. It's a whole bunch of different genes all working together. It's a very complex system that doesn't have an easy on or off switch to exactly turn on or turn off. So intelligence is what is called a polygenetic trait. So even though they do have an impact on intelligence, we have to remember, all of the other influences from the environment, including educational experiences, family background, socioeconomic status, and even cultural factors, all together only account for between 20 and 50% of the variance that we find in intelligence. Now the caveat to that is to remember that both the genetics and the environment are interdependent. They do relate to each other, and in some ways, the environment can bring out the best of the genetic influence. So this gene-environment kind of interplay does play a critical role in how overall intelligence develops. For example, you can imagine a child with really good genes, basically the kind of genes that should show high genetic potential, not achieving them if the environment doesn't allow them to explore, to develop early on in their life, and vice versa. So for everybody, a stimulating and supportive learning environment is a must if we want to maximize intelligence and opportunity. Also the new science of epigenetics makes it so that certain environmental factors actually cause histone changes, which means it wraps around our DNA, changing the expression of the DNA itself. Epigenetics shows us that what we choose in our life, the environments that we're in, actually will affect the way our genetics are expressed. So to some degree, we have to think about the genetic component still being manipulatable by the environment and the choices that we make with our lives. So we have to think of it as all tied together. There's variance in what's genetic and what's environmental, but they're so intertwined in so many ways Ways, it's always important that we try to take the most control over our lives. We create the best environments for our children. But we also have these amazing gene therapies like CRISPR-Cas9 showing up and making it so that we have a huge potential future to change the actual DNA in every cell in our body. So that opens the door. Could we actually change the DNA that's inside of us to be more intelligent? And how many more years would that take? Is that a timeline that's realistic for any of us watching this video right now? Let's start by breaking down the broad steps that have to happen before you or I could ever have an injection that would make us more intelligent. Okay, so first off, we need to see some kind of CRISPR-like technology used safely in humans. Technologies that can change every gene in our entire body are extremely dangerous if we get them wrong. And there's so many knock-on effects that it's hard to actually say that you can do it for any time in the future in a safe way. But out of all the major steps that we'd have to go through to actually increase intelligence, this one is probably actually the most reasonable to see achieved in our lifetime. Now, I'm even gonna guess that five, 10, 15 years from now, we're gonna 
going to see some gene therapies broadly used and pretty darn safe. Now, I'm not talking about knowing which genes to change, but just the fact that we could inject gene therapies that actually do something reliably and change exactly the genes that we want them to, that is possible, probably. And I say that because we have already had one gene therapy approved by the FDA. In previous videos, I've talked about gene therapies that have been successfully used in mice to lower cholesterol and are now in human trials. In fact, the actual one that was approved by the FDA is for sickle cell disease, and that's on the market currently. I've talked about how successful gene therapies have been at eliminating AIDS from rodent models, and now there's a human trials in that also. So that gives me a sense that this is very possible. And then when you think about how many billionaires in the world just want to be smarter and can devote tons of money to getting an injection one day to make themselves smarter, I think that you have all of the things in play to make this a reality at some point. But a bigger question, even with the funding, even with the data science, will we tease apart the complexity of intelligence to a place where we know which genes we need to, you know, trim out or update or change, add, remove, delete, to actually not mess with the body in any serious way and just be intelligent in a way that makes sense, that works for people? That's a big question. I'm not sure that even something like a quantum computer or something like an advanced AI algorithm that can tease apart all of the variables is going to get reliably there, but it isn't impossible. Like I could see that we've seen AI cut through huge search landscapes before and hone in on things. So I think it's possible, but to me, that's not a guarantee in our lifetime. The other problem I see is that you have to do a lot of human intelligence testing in humans. Like I'm not super convinced that if you inject a mouse with some kind of genetic sequence and it learns to run a maze better, or it can like memorize where food is better, or it can identify colors better, that that means if you inject that in a human, that the kind of intelligent change that we would have in our lives would be the kind of human-like intelligence that we were looking for. So I could just see the evidence of building very slowly towards something that looks like the intelligence that we want to have. The other interesting component about it would simply just be its societal impact, the social impact. Media would instantly pick up on some kind of injection like this. If a few people knew about it, it would go crazy in the media saying this exists, it can make you smarter, these people have injected it, and here's the evidence that they're smarter. I think the whole world would be kind of upend by it, and there would be debates on news programs and all over the world about who should have access to it, how much it should cost, how safe it is. It would be very wild to see how it would be handled. I think any company that owns serious patents in this space would be under a lot of scrutiny and pressure. I think that there would be a lot of military interests where people would want to make their militaries smarter, their intelligence better, and it might not be something that's commercially available to citizens at first. And I can imagine so much speculation on the internet saying like, oh, I think this celebrity or politician took the, the, the shot, you know, the, the intelligence jab, and that's why they're smarter and that's unfair. And you'd always have to be like proving to people that you're dumb like normal people and not super intelligent because you cheated. So when you think about that all together, you sum all those challenges together, is it realistic mm -hmm. that you and I are going to have access to a pill at a, you know, an injection for a reasonable cost sometime in our lifetime? I'm gonna say I just, 50-50, like I don't really know. This is one of those places where my gut instinct isn't giving me much of a clue. It just really seems out of reach. One thing I do think is very likely is that as we start dealing with gene therapies, they slowly start trickling down to not just like FDA approved medicines, but into hobbyists and people who want to play around on the internet print out certain genetic changes, try that on themselves, on their animals, and all sorts of things and in all sorts of places where they really shouldn't be. And we're going to let a lot of cats out of the bag. We're gonna have a lot of knock-on effects in nature that are gonna be really hard to control. And I think that's gonna make the whole thing feel very weird, very scary, very uncertain. And most people will probably just not opt for the, you know, the intelligence jab, whether it's available through real good means like a government or a hospital or it's just like your neighbor who's like dude i printed some out you want to get injected and let's get smart you know and it, and and realistically it starts getting into the whole concept of eugenics and the moral implications of designing humans with desired traits like who should have access to it if any of us have access to it, 
we should all probably have access to it. Or maybe nobody should have access to it so it keeps the world on a fair playing field. Would it be fair if the rich had access to intelligence enhancements? Do they deserve that for their entrepreneurial spirit or their, you know, fulfillment of the American dream? Should those same people who are now hyper intelligent be accountable for problems in the world because they have the intelligence to solve them and other people don't? I don't know. But the fact is genetic engineering is here. The door is open and it's going to get weird. And in theory, if the right genes can be identified, which artificial intelligence gives us some clues that it might be possible. We have large genetic databases like 23andMe and Ancestry.com that you can run these large scale tests on, there could very well be big general patterns of the exact DNA sequences that would need to be adjusted safely in the entire population to make anyone intelligent. And you might very well be able to make these changes to a full grown adult, not something that has to happen at the time of conception or incubated from a baby. This could be something that could be injected into adults and could just make the change. I'll wake up tomorrow, let it take root and be more intelligent. And if you're looking to be more intelligent in your future, make sure to inject that subscribe button. Help me get to my next goal, 10,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.